Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are tuning in to Brahma Viharas, Chapter 2, Compassion. Now, if you haven't caught any of Chapter 1, which was a chapter on loving kindness, don't worry. Uh, you'll get benefit by uh, watching this episode. Uh, each episode is indeed a standalone experience. Uh, some of them are guided meditations, some of them are talks, and so forth. Today, uh, I believe I'll be doing a guided meditation, although I did have a few things I wanted to say, uh, so hopefully I can get to all of that. So, the chapter on compassion. Now, I often get asked the, the question, what's the difference between loving kindness and compassion? Why are they uh, two separate chapters when they seem so related? And indeed, uh, loving kindness and compassion are quite related. But loving kindness is really an opening and, in, and an embracing. There's this warmth, uh, this open embrace of the present moment. Uh, when we're extending loving kindness to others, we're kind of welcoming them and embracing them. Compassion is a bit different. Compassion is holding space for another, whether it's holding space for their suffering or holding space for their process, for their growth. Uh, it's more about an accepting, uh, an accepting of the present moment, an accepting of the other, or an accepting of ourself as well, self-compassion. So recognizing the human experience, recognizing uh, the human predicament, and accepting that. So that's the, the qualitative difference there between uh, loving kindness and compassion. And that's why there is a chapter uh, specifically for loving kindness and then another chapter specifically for compassion. Now, when we practice compassion, uh, and if you've already done the practices on loving kindness, you'll feel a resonance there. So it's not as if we practice loving kindness and we do that for a couple of weeks and then we go to compassion, we do that for a couple of weeks. They actually feed into each other. So as our compassion deepens, our loving kindness deepens too. And you'll notice even the practices that we haven't gotten to yet, or if you haven't experienced those yet, the practices of equanimity and joy, those practices also too, or those qualities rather, they also too get fed uh, through the practice of compassion. So uh, they're not four distinct entities, but actually uh, four qualities that are receiving benefit from the light of awareness, which we are cultivating in these meditation practices. So I think that's quite important. So here today we are extending loving, I'm sorry, we're extending compassion uh, to loved ones. And so this is uh, somewhat intuitive, right? When we have a, uh, somebody that we love and we see that they're suffering, uh, we, we kind of intuitively want to help them, want to be there for them. Now, there is a difference between wanting to help a loved one who's suffering uh, and holding space for that suffering. Now, I, I mention this because oftentimes we want to move forward to help somebody, particularly a loved one, when they see that they're struggling with something, but we're moving forward because we're not comfortable with how their struggle feels to us. Now, when we're doing that, we're reacting to our own discomfort rather than moving forward to help them out of their situation. We're reacting to the situation and how the situation feels to us rather than helping them out of just wanting to help. And so the idea is when we see a loved one in pain or see a loved one suffering, we move forward to help them 
by recognizing what it is that they need in the present moment, rather than moving forward, uh, projecting ourselves into their situation and trying to figure out what we would want in that situation. Generally, when we, when we move forward to alleviate our own discomfort, uh, there's, it's not as accurate of a motion. We might indeed be successful in helping through that motion, but it's not as clear. It's not this, we're not seeing it clearly because we're seeing ourself in their situation rather than experiencing their suffering as it arises. And so these practices on compassion are really uh, cu cultivating that type of seeing so that we can be at peace and hold space for another suffering at the same time. So we're not moving forward uh, in that motion trying to alleviate somebody else's suffering because it makes us feel uncomfortable. So that's, that's quite an important distinction there. Okay. Before we get into the meditation itself, I just want to read this poem from the 7th century monk Shantideva, uh, because I, I do think this is a real uh, beautiful illustration of compassion. May I be the medicine for the sick. May I become food and drink in times of famine. May I be a protector for those without. May I be a guide for travelers, a boat, a bridge a ship for those who want to cross over. May I be a lamp for those who seek a light, a bed for those who seek rest. And may I be a servant for all of those in need of a servant. I guess we could add, may I wear a mask to protect those who need protection. <laughs> so without any further ado, I will ring the meditation bell and I'll use the sound of the bell to bring us into the sense of hearing. We'll go through the sounds of the present moment We'll come through the body, experiencing the sensations arising throughout the body. Remember, bodily sensations are always present moment experiences. Though we can remember a past sensation, we can't take medicine for that headache we had a week ago, although we might still remember how painful that headache was. So that's, bodily sensations are always right now. We can anticipate the pain of a root canal we might have to have a week from now, but you can't take anesthetic for that surgery right now, right? So sounds, always present moment experiences, sensations of the body, always right now. And then we'll finish the grounding of awareness in the present moment by coming into the breath and experiencing the breath. Then we'll offer these phrases of compassion first to our own heart, allowing the compassion in the heart, experiencing that open, accepting quality. And then we'll send the phrases out to a loved one. This loved one shouldn't be someone we have a romantic relationship with. It could be a family member, a very, very close friend, that's fine. Offering these precious gifts of compassion to their heart. And after each phrase, we'll spend about a minute 
visualizing or imagining what their life would look or feel like if each phrase was completely reflective of their life circumstance. Now you might feel an opening to the phrase, beautiful. Let the compassion just flow from that opening. There might be a resistance to the phrase and that's okay too. The resistances are showing us where we hold back compassion in our life. We don't try to change those resistances here during the meditation. Those changes will naturally unfold uh, through the course of our days, weeks, months, and years during the practices of compassion. So we don't need to force any changes. You might not feel any response to the phrases, and that's fine too. There, we're just planting the seeds of compassion. And eventually, those seeds do start to bear fruit. Okay, I think that's all I want to say. Enjoy this offering, compassion for our loved ones. So allowing the body, mind, and heart to rest into this present moment experience. Now ring the sound of the meditation bell. Allow the decay of the bell to guide your awareness into silence. And while resting in the silence of this present moment, noticing the sounds which might be arising out of that silent space and returning back to that silence. And now ring the sound of the bell again. Allow the decay of the bell to guide your awareness into silence. and allowing your awareness to rest in that silent space of the present moment. And expanding out through that silent space, noticing the sounds. You don't need to focus on any one particular sound, but allow your awareness to embrace the entire field of sound noticing all of the sounds and the silence at the same time. And while resting with the silence and sounds, bringing attention and awareness to sensations of the feet against the mat or the floor. Sensations of clothing against the legs. 
Noticing the body against the chair or cushion, mat or floor. Noticing the sensations of clothing against the back. You might notice the hands resting against the body or touching each other. Sensations of the arms resting against the body. Sensations of clothing against the shoulders. There might also be sensations arising from the back of the neck and the sides of the neck. Sensations arising from the ears and the face, including the lips and the nose, the eyes and the forehead. Noticing any sensations arising from the top of the head. And while resting there with the silence and sound, sensations arising throughout the body, bringing attention to the breath as it enters the nose and leaves the nose. Noticing the breath, touching the back of the throat, the rib cage expanding and contracting with each breath, the rising and falling of the abdomen as you inhale and exhale. You might also notice the back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. The shoulders rising and falling with each breath. And so we'll rest there just for a few moments. Maintaining spacious awareness on the present moment experience sound and silence, body and breath, and just rest. And now, while resting in this present moment experience of breath and body, silence and sound, we'll begin offering these very precious phrases of compassion first to our own heart. As if we were bringing our heart the most precious, rare gift. And although we'll move through these phrases rather quickly, you can still visualize or imagine what our life might look or feel like if these phrases were completely reflective of our life circumstance. May I be free from suffering. May I be free from disturbance and harm.
May I accept things just as they are. May I experience the world accepting me just as I am. May I serve whatever arises. And breathing in and breathing out. Allow a visualization to arise in your mind's eye. Visualizing a loved one. Now, if visualization is difficult for you, you can just say this person's name a few times, getting a feel for their presence. If you can visualize them, that's good. Maybe noticing the type of clothing they might be wearing or how they might sit or stand in front of you. And we'll begin offering these very precious gifts of compassion to our loved one's heart. And after each phrase, we'll spend about a minute visualizing, imagining what their life would look or feel like if each phrase was completely reflective of their life circumstance. May you be free from suffering. May you be free from disturbance and harm. May you accept things just as they are.
May you experience the world accepting you just as you are. May you serve whatever arises. May you be May you be free from disturbance and harm. May you accept things just as they are.
May you experience the world accepting you just as you are. May you serve whatever arises. and breathing in and breathing out, allowing any visualizations in the mind's eye to dissolve. You can let those fade back into the open, spacious awareness from which they came. Noticing the silence and the sound of the present moment experience. And just rest there listening to the present moment. And while resting with the silence and sound, bringing attention to the sensations of feet against the mat or floor, Sensations of clothing against the legs. Noticing the weight of the body against the mat or cushion, chair or floor. Noticing the sensations of clothing against the back. The hands resting against the body or touching each other. You might notice the sensations of arms resting against the body and the sensations of clothing against the shoulders. And you might also notice any sensations arising from the back of the neck, the sides of the neck, sensations arising through the back of the head and the ears, Noticing any sensations arising through the cheeks of the face, the lips and the nose, the eyes and the forehead. Noticing any sensations arising from the top of the head. while resting there with the silence and sound and the sensations arising throughout the body, bringing attention to the breath as it enters and leaves the nose, the breath touching the back of the throat, the ribcage expanding and contracting with each breath, 
the rising and falling of the abdomen as you inhale and exhale. You might also notice the back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. Shoulders rising and falling with each breath. And just rest there for a few moments, resting with this present moment experience, silence and sound, body and breath, and just rest. And so I hope you enjoyed that guided meditation offering on uh, compassion for ourself and for our loved one. Uh, and something really interesting happened during uh, that guided meditation. Uh, between the first phrase and the second phrase of offering uh, this compassion to our loved one, my phone rang. And it rang and then I, I quickly turned it off and returned back to the meditation. And then the phrase, may I be free from disturbance and harm, arose. And so this is one really beautiful way to use this practice. When something arises in our awareness that is disturbing, and we say, may I be free from this disturbance. And then we visualize what our life would look and feel like if we could be completely free from all disturbances. And our loved one could be completely free from all of their disturbances. And the reason why that phone call was perfect timing was it was a disturbance. So I was able to feel in that moment what it felt like to to be disturbed, and then what it would feel like to be free from that disturbance, and then what it would feel like for my loved one to be free, not just from the phone ringing type of disturbance, but from all disturbances. Because disturbances, although they vary in degree of intensity, the disturbance always feels the same. Now it might be, again, a small disturbance or a very large disturbance, might be a phone call or a phone call which tells us we're losing our job. <laughs> That's a, quite a, a large varying degree there. Uh, and, but it's still a disturbance. And so this practice can be great in this way. Uh, may I be free from suffering? Well, a lot of suffering going on in the world right now. For ourselves, perhaps, for our loved one, perhaps. What would our life look and feel like if we really could be free from that? And so I'll go into each of these phrases individually tomorrow. Tomorrow I am giving a talk, and I'll go through uh, each phrase individually and really dissect each phrase and how uh, we can use them in this present moment uh, experience to develop deeper and deeper experiences of compassion. I'll also be talking about uh, a story of Angulimala, who was a, a monk in uh, the Buddha's time, who studied under the Buddha. It's a very famous story about forgiveness and compassion. Uh, and I'll answer a few questions that I got sent in as well. Uh, a couple of questions about love and kindness, some questions about compassion as well. By the way, if there are any questions or comments, do send them over. 
happy to address anything that is sent my way if I can. So I think that's it for today. Do stay safe, stay healthy, stay clean, wear your masks. I just posted on my Facebook page another scientific study proving how effective mask wearing is. Uh, and I know there's uh, some debates about this, but all of the scientists pretty much agree uh, that this is a good idea. So it's a good idea. Wear your mask, keep us all safe. I'll be wearing mine. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you all tomorrow.